Howdy folks, this is the Novice, back with a uh, little tutorial to help you out with the upcoming launch for Dual Universe. Uh, as you can see, I've got the factory going, producing a few things for me. I uh, have a few things set up that I didn't have set up before. We'll talk about those real quick, but uh, I wanted to go into uh, a couple of things. Number one, this place is getting really crowded. So the next video is going to address that. We're actually going to move up. As you can see, I've already started. Uh, we'll talk about that. And one of the things that I'm building here is a uh, basic honeycomb refinery. So all of, this, all of this voxel or honeycomb that you see here, this is matte black concrete honeycomb. And this right here should be luminescent glass. Yeah, luminescent white glass. So... I uh, want to make more of this so that I can make some floors up here. I'm going to make some different colors and stuff so you can see that you can do red, blue, purple, yellow, etc. Uh, glossy, you can do copper, you can do silver, you can do all kinds of stuff. But I'm just going to show you a couple. Don't have enough ore to build you everything, but I'm still working on uh, a startup package here. The only thing I uh, borrowed was some money from my uh, uh, orga organization, so because it's going to go away I wanna, when the beta quit, quits anyway. I have produced a couple other things. If you want to look here, <clears throat> I got a basic glass furnace produced to make uh, some glass products. I do have, uh, like we talked about over here, this new item, this basic 3D printer. And I have an input container to that and an output container to that. Now. And then for this uh, chemical industry, I have an input and output container because I'm running out of room I really need some transfer units so I built one transfer unit and uh, I had to build it in my large assembler here large assembly line and uh, like I said right now <clears throat> building that honeycomb refinery to make the uh, voxel or the honeycomb to be able to fill in and make a little pad up there and going to move all the industry up there and it's going to uh, be a lot better down here so but I wanted to talk to you uh, about a couple things. Well, the, the two other things I want to cover in this video is uh, container sizes, different containers. Talk about that for a few minutes and the importance of it. And then I want to talk about transfer units. I built one transfer unit. I want to sh I want to hook one up with a cu with a couple of containers and show you how you would uh, use those in your factory so that you don't have to always be doing something. All right. So. Let's go to over to here and let's take a look. So I built a large container. As you can see, here's your scale. So right in front of us, we have a little bitty extra small container, right? Right here. And then these are small containers, right? So you, you get quite a bit of jump from your extra small to your small. Your medium is your next step up, right? Uh, and of course, you've also got your large. Well, there's two other sizes that go past this one. There's a, an extra large and an expanded extra large that are much bigger than the large, right? And they carry a lot more. But just look at the scale uh, of this. I want to kind of get up here and show you from the top of the building. I'll get out of build mode. This is, this is what we're looking at here as far as scale goes on how big this container is, right? So uh, I also kind of organized my storage just a little bit in that these are part of my containerage here, all these small ones, but that large is my main one. And so I have two hubs. I have the one that came with the building and the one I got for uh, doing the refer a friend bonus, right? So I got two hubs. That's important. If you don't do the refer a friend bonus, you're, you're prob uh, when you create your account, you're gonna miss out on some gear so uh, if you look through here I have a lot of room now before I did this I was way up here I was almost full before I put the large container in then all of a sudden I'm down to 27 percent and I've even loaded it up since then so uh, made a huge difference in storage right imagine having 10 large containers how much I can store right this bottom one is the medium container and nine small that I went and bought. I could have made them, but I didn't. Uh, and that has 
my ore coming into it. I've already taken all the ore out except for what came in from my miners just recently. As you can see, my miners are running. Uh, most of my ore is set up over here. Let me go into build mode, hit B, and I'll get out of build mode. So, uh, oh, I gotta fix this. It's not lined up right. All right, there you go. That looks better. All right. So, if you look at this, I've got quartz. I've got hematite. I've got coal and I've got bauxite and what I've done if we look at the we we'll go to the connections here you'll see that each of those containers is connected to uh, both of these basic refiners right so I've got uh, each of the basic types of ore that I can mine on this tile going into two to re two refiners the best bet would be to have at least four refiners one for each kind of ore but I don't have I, I didn't produce them yet but once I did, I would have one container going to each type, all right? And I would probably have a larger container and I would have the miner put this ore directly into like a medium or a large container to feed these, right? And then the output of that, I've got one of them going here, one of them is going here, and then uh, over here, all that's, that's my peers, because that's the output that, that is feeding my basic smelters. And then my smelters are both going back to this top container. So I've just kind of organized it a little bit. It flows from ore to pure and from pure into product, right? And when we get into here, uh, I don't have anything making right now. But if I did, it would be my steel product or my psyllium product or whatever, right? I also set up some stuff here uh, with containers. With all of these feeding the small container, uh, so the two electronics unit, uh, let me get the name right, basic electronics industries and basic metalwork industries, They're, those are all feeding this container. They have inputs from uh, the main hub over there, so that's fine. I don't even have this one hooked up yet, I just put it out here. Why do I have containers feeding this? This is the input to this container. This is the output to this container. Uh, m frankly, because I'm running out of outputs, I can't use uh, my main container as an output because you can only output to like 10 things. And so I've started having to, to work around this. So how could I get around this? I could put a transfer unit uh, on my containers, my input containers, and I could, uh, I, I could, sort, I could use that. So tr transfer units are really important. I'm going to set up some containers here, and I'll show you how this works. Go into build mode. We'll set up. I've got two extra small containers. Okay, the one on the left will be the input. The one on the right will be the output. So let's just say that this is the output uh, for one of my manufacturers, right? Okay, say so it's the output of our basic refiner, right? So what it's doing is it's it's creating the pure product right right pure carbon silicon iron whatever uh, and I use this pure in several different industries so if I take this and, and start connecting to assemblers I can only connect to 10 items before I run out of slots right so what do I do well here's what I do I got a transfer unit and I put it up here. I'm going to put it up above it. Normally you stack them above or you can stack one, two, three. So, so I can put 10 transfer units above this container and then link the container to the transfer unit and then link the transfer unit to my next industry that needs an input. Right? And if I have 10 of them I can go 100. If I have uh, more I just have to uh, do another container and then and do, do 10 more right so that's how you set it up you start stacking these up above your output container so let's put some stuff in here uh, what are we going to use what do I have a bunch of some of uh, I have some pure here somewhere Oh, here we go. 
Let's put this pure iron in here as much as we can fit. We can fit 1,200 in there, so 1.2 kilometers. All right, so let's say that I want this to always transfer this input container, and I want in this input container, I always want, uh, let's call it 300 liters, or let's call it 200 liters. I always want 200 liters because that's feeding an industry and it doesn't need all that much, right? But I always want to keep it full. So here's what we do. We go into our build mode. We link the output container to the transfer unit, the transfer unit to the input container, right? And then we get out of it. Then what do I have to do? I have to go configure it. Well, I can look at my containers, right? I got an input and an output container. There's nothing in them. Uh, actually, that should have something in it. Let's go to configuration. Let's go to iron. Let's go down here to pure iron. Pick, pick our item. And now let's look at our containers. Okay, so our input container has 1,200. Our output container has nothing. Okay. So let's go to production. I want this to maintain 200. All right, so I'm going to hit start. Notice that it got turned green. He came on. It got it a little bit crooked. And this container is empty, but it won't be for long. There's 100, and it'll move another 100 over here, and then it'll shut off because I told it to keep it at 200. All right, perfect. All right, let me fix this. I can't stand this. Good enough. All right. Eh, not really. That's better. All right. So we got our 200 in here. It's shut off. Notice that. It still says it's maintaining, right? Uh, so it's pending. Uh, so let's take all this out. Let's put it in here. All right, it turns back on, it turned green, and it'll start filling it up again. There you go. It's got 100, it'll put 100 in there, and it'll shut off again. All right, so that's what transfer units do in your industry. It keeps you from having to run around like right here. I got to do this. I'll drag that in here, right? That's my output for this machine. I have to do everything manually. I don't want that. I want to be able to... Put it where it needs to go. So you set your factory up so you have a flow, right? You have a flow from ore, basic ore, right? It goes into your refiner, and then the output of that will go into containers, and then maybe with transfer units go to many other different machines, such as a basic smelter uh, or whatever. It could be used in something else. Uh, and then the output of this will go into other things and have transfer units that move it to input to other items. And in the end, you don't have a single thing to do other than put ore in the back end and take product out of the, the final part, right? So that's the great thing about setting your factory up and having transfer units is you don't ever have to do anything in the middle. Except put schematics in if it needs it, right? You gotta keep, you gotta keep building schematics right here, and that's what I'm doing right now. I'm building some more schematics. I'm building some products and material schematics right now, right? And these are done. I'll retrieve those. I'll retrieve those. So I got three buildings, so I can build more. So uh, in theory, I would keep keep doing that. Let's do a medium container. So, 
Let's try to type it in correctly. Basic container. Gotta get the name right. Basic container medium. Let's do two and two. So we'll just do four. It won't take that long to build if I do that many. So you can do five batches and you can do multiple items per batch. But it'll take longer for each item and it costs money to make schematics. So think about that too. Uh, you got to be making money to buy schematics to make product. And so you need to put the cost of the schematics, you need to add those into whatever price you sell for stuff, sell stuff for at the market. All right. So I think uh, that pretty much concludes this. The next uh, video is going to be a little bit exciting because we're going to take all this cluttered mess down here and we're going to neatly put it up here. Uh, but that's actually going to be the video after next. Next video we're actually going to be laying down a floor up there uh, after we uh, are able to create our voxel. All right, so let me go ahead and pick this stuff up can't pick up something that has stuff in it. So, let's see here. Nope. Oh, it was moving stuff while I was... <laughs> Cannot delete printing industry. Okay, stop. You're right. Can't delete it. All right, so we made a, uh, a honeycomb, and uh, that medium assembler is actually tied to, <laughs> I know, it's odd that it's right here, right? So let's go ahead and uh, put that up, in a basic honeycomb unit. And we've got tons of room left down here, right? So we're going to put it right in the middle right here, right now, because it's all going to go upstairs anyway, eventually. Uh, and then we want to be able to uh, uh, produce stuff here. So I'm probably going to take a couple of containers that I'm using for something else and use them for this too. Uh, like I'm going to go ahead and probably just shut this off. Normally I would do a finish and stop, but I'm just gonna do a uh, I'm just gonna do a stop. We're not gonna wait for that. We're gonna take uh, the items out of here. Those were my input items, and then I'm gonna move these containers. Actually, I'm gonna just take them away here, and I'm gonna put them up next to that. I don't have enough containers to go buy more but or make more or something all right so we're going to put these above this to show that they're working for this the top container will be our input the bottom container will be our output all right that looks good Keep that on for a minute. Uh, we'll go to our link tool, our six tool, tops input. So I'm linking it to it, and the bottom's output. So I'm linking from that industry to the container. All right, so that's our that's our links. One going out, one going in, and if you look at this one, you can see both links. All right, so. If I can't see anything when I click this, it means I haven't trained my talent up to at least a, a level one skill, right? Uh, we talked about that before. So you need to be able to uh, you need to be able to like this one's the honeycomb proficiency. I'm at just level one. That's it. Uh, I could do level two and, and everything and it would give me a lot more benefits, right? Uh, every, everything you do helps you out. So 
Uh, but you got to have at least level one or tier one or whatever it is to, to access it. So let's uh, let's configure this. Uh, let's see. This is all the kind of stuff that you can make. There's a whole bunch of voxel, right? Sky silicon panel, right? Different colors, purple silicon panel. Uh, before you make voxel, what should you do, right? Well, let's look at these. I have aluminum, carbon, iron, silicone. So quartz, hematite, uh, coal, and the aluminum one, right? So let's go look and see how much uh, ore I have. What, what do I have the most of? Because I'm probably going to make voxel that I have the most of. I got about five. Uh, they'll have much hematite. Got six thousand coal. I got I got more aluminum than anything. All right. So let's just go ahead and uh, we'll build something out of aluminum. So let's configure this. It'll tell us if we need a schematic. I could build aged aluminum gray pattern whatever uh, dark gray black eh, we're not gonna be that boring we're gonna try to make something that looks cool uh, here's a green aluminum panel ice aluminum panel uh, there's a mat uh, they all look a little different it's kinda hard to tell what they are until you really get uh, a chance there's a dark gray that's almost a black there's red there's purple uh, now these aren't going to be like hard that that hard on that color, right? Uh, it's going to be kind of a, a, a tinge of. Some of the other ones, if I make red, it's going to be like a bright red, right? Like if I go down, uh, let's see here. If I go if I go into carbon, and I go into orange carbon panel. Uh, let's see if I can find one here. There's a yellow aluminum. If you go into some of these, you get really bright, vivid colors, like a like a scarlet red, uh, a bright green. It just depends on on what you're doing. So you got to find what works good for you, right? There's a whole ton of colors in here. Let's let's just type in red, right? So there's red aluminum, painted red aluminum and red aluminum. Don't ask me what the difference is. Red carbon, red carbon panel, uh, red silicon, red iron, painted red iron. And so you got, the, those are your reds, right? You got purple. You got a bunch of different purples. Oops, type it in here correctly. There we go. Painted purple aluminum. So let's do let's do a red, uh, and we'll start with that. And then we wanted to do it aluminum, so we'll just do painted red aluminum. We'll just apply that, and it tells me I don't need a schematic. No schematic is required, right? So I'm good. I can build this. What do I have to have? I gotta have pure aluminum. That's all I need to build this, all right? So in the input container, which is the top one, I need to put pure aluminum. So let's see what I got here. Do I have any pure aluminum on me? I don't have any pure aluminum on me. All right, but I have some over here. One of these containers. Oh, not much. All right, I guess I need to make some pure aluminum. Oops. Got to stop it first. Now we'll reconfigure it for aluminum. Apply, start. All right. Well, since we don't have aluminum, let's look at what we do have. Uh, I've got a little bit of silicone. I've got carbon. Let's make something carbon. Nice. 
So let's put this up here in the carpet slot. I do have some iron too, but I like I, I use the iron for a lot of stuff, so I need to hang on to that. So we're not going to build that one. Let's build a different one. So let's go down to the get rid of the aluminum. Let's build uh, let's build carbon. So we'll do uh, paint a red carbon. And I need to have carbon in my containers. Pure. Okay. So we should be good. I don't need a schematic for this. And I want it to make uh, a thousand. Alright. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make some different colors. I'm going to make some red and some blue and some yellow and some orange and purple and we're gonna fill these squares up here with different colors to kind of give you guys an idea of what some of the stuff looks like. I'll make some aluminum, I'll make some carbon, I'll make some iron, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what you can do with the different colors when you're making stuff and we'll go up there. The next video I'll go up there and place that voxel and, and we'll actually build some up there but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, call it for now and uh, Hopefully this helps out, the, the container sizes, the transfer units, all important stuff to understand uh, with respect to this game. Uh, and I hope you all have a good launch and we'll see you soon. Howdy folks, this is the Novice back with another video. Wanted to uh, help you guys out that are getting ready to start with a new launch of Dual Universe after a couple of years of beta work here going on. Uh, giving you some other uh, tutorials here on what's, what, what you can do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, look in my container here and I'm going to sort it. It's already sorted high to low. I'm going to see what voxel I have the most of and I'm going to select it. Uh, actually, I need to select it in this one. Alright, so I'm going to equip that. That's the galvanized gray iron. Alright. Uh, so I'm going to go up to the roof now. One, two, up here at the roof. And you see I've started a little lattice work of, I uh, took some voxel and, and uh, made some lattice work here. I want to expand on that a little bit. I'm going to hit the build mode. I'm going to hit the, the two key, which is uh, the deploy voxel tool, right? And as you can see, there's kind of a little picture of a voxel right there. Uh, and what we're going to do here is we're going to go to roughly to the center and we're going to put one there. So I'm just going to click and it'll put one up. Oh, it totally, totally does that sometimes. It messes with the adjacent ones. It pulls them out of shape. Uh, there are ways to, to avoid that. I'm going to hit Alt and then uh, click that. Hit Delete. Oh, and it worked. I'm going to hit undo and undo. Let's just stop that. Alright, so let's just go back this way from the middle. We'll work it the other direction. I think it'll work better. Alright, so I've got a little box set there and as you notice I've got a little ghostly figure here. I'm going to click the left button again. Boom. It did that whole row for me all at once. Right. You have to be at the right aspect. Sometimes it'll want to go up or down. In this case, you got to be looking the right way to get it to go the way that you want it to go. So I'm going to go ahead and if it messes with a voxel, it messes with a voxel. I'm not going to worry about it. And it actually did it right that time. Uh, so I'm going to also go to the corners out here and I'm going to put some uh, poles up. So what I'm doing is I'm actually building this out to the very edge of my small core uh, frame. So I can I can go all the way up there to the top. So I'm actually going to run one up to the top here. The reason I'm doing that is I want to be able to run some lights. Okay. Notice it's going out and along the, the way I don't want it to. It's going down. I don't want it to go down. I'm just going to hit 2 and delete it. Go back, open it up. All right, now I got the right aspect, and I'm able to come up with it. Oh, 
I didn't go quite high enough. Oh, no, I did. Okay. Let's go to this corner. We'll do the same thing. Uh, let's see. Over on the right, it shows me how much I have left, and I've got enough. Okay, we're good there. Just putting these corner poles up just so I can see the boundaries and also so that I can put lights up here if I want to. Uh, I may even put a landing pad up there and make another elevator up. Who knows? Alright. So now I've got it kind of divided. And what I planned on doing was making different colors and different types of voxel and filling in some of these squares with different colors. Uh, not what I would really design in real life as, uh, you know, a, a pad of many colors, but uh, I, I definitely want to uh, show you all some of the different colors that you can make. I am going to split this one more time. I'm going to put one right here. I'm going to just keep going until it turns red on me. When it turns red, that means you went too far and you can't go that far. Hey, it went all the way across. How about that? Uh, let's see. Do I have enough? Yep, I got enough. I'll do another row here. I'm just randomly... Randomly going across here. There you go. So that's not going to be an exact split that was eyeballing it. Just trying to make some uh, rough squares there. And, uh, well fill all that in and see how she looks so this is going to be quite a bit of uh, space when I move all this industry up from the bottom up to here uh, that'll be the next video me actually moving it up and setting everything up in a lot more logical fashion uh, but uh, yeah we'll get all that taken care of uh, so I don't like the fact that this is sticking up through my voxel see this is actually higher so I'm gonna hit a 9 button and I'm gonna bring that down one Now, uh, we might go one more just to be sure. Make sure it's below my voxel. That way it won't take up any room there. Uh, Alright, so I'll leave that container there. It's a pretty big container, huh? Uh, not even the largest one. Talked a little, little bit about that last time around. If you didn't see that, watch the last video I did. We talk about transfer units. Uh, so we've got the uh, item making honeycomb. We're missing input components, it says. Let's look here. It says we're missing pure carbon. Oh, doesn't have enough. All right, well, let's uh, see if we can get some pure aluminum here. And some more of that in there and let's see if we can make some aluminum uh, so we should have some in here so we got some painted red carbon so we're gonna do finish and stop we got we'll just go with what we got and then let's look at configuration we'll look at just the aluminum we've already done red let's do blue So let's see here. Blue platter marble. So we're gonna do something more more vivid this time. We'll do a polished uh, let's see here. Let's see, what do we need here in our container? We need pure carbon. Let's try this again. honeycomb, plastic honeycomb, steel honeycomb. So apparently I don't see a, a, a blue uh, blue option. Let's just do this one. We'll apply this one. And in our container we need marble product. Alright. 
So let's let's back off just a little bit. Show available to productions only. So well no. Let's look at let's go back to red. So there was a lot more red if we opened this up a little more. Do yellow. Okay, let's try to do the yellow derillium panel. Uh, all these others require a little more effort, so we're just going to go with uh, this one for now. And we'll just start it making a run of that. It says it does not have. Do I have? Oh, let's see here. Oh, I need through really. Well, let me uh, let me work with this, folks, and uh, I'll get back with you, and uh, we'll keep moving. <laughs> 